All right, so in this video, we're going to go over something called a quotient and also how Kp and Kc are actually related. Um, so the quotient um, is very important in equilibrium, and really it's very similar to K. You would measure it the same way, so if you take the concentration of each of the products, its power of its coefficient, and divide it by the reactants to the power of their coefficients, um, that's how you're going to get Q, which is the same as you would get K. But Q is at any time of the reaction, so it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be at equilibrium. So Q can change, and that Q depends on how much you have of each of your reactants and products. K is the equilibrium constant, which means it stays the same, um, and its value is when you divide the concentration of the products and the reactants at equilibrium. So Q is actually used to figure out if the reaction is going to uh, keep going, so is it at equilibrium or not, and which direction can it go. Will it go towards the product side to make more products, or will it go towards the reactant side to make more reactants? All right, so if Q is less than K, then that means that the number on the bottom, so the reactants, is too large. So remember, Q is the same thing as uh, K, really, almost, almost the same thing. Products divided by reactants. So if Q is less than K, then that means the number on the bottom is too large. So the reactants, the amount of reactants that you have is too large. So the reaction, reaction will shift to the left-hand side or the product side. So it's going to make more products. Um, if Q is greater than K, that means the number on the top is too large. So the number of products would be too high. So if I've got too many products, then the reaction is going to shift and make more reactants to get rid of those products. So it's going to shift towards the left. Now if Q is equal to K, then the reaction is at equilibrium. All right, so is the system at equilibrium? If not at equilibrium, which direction is, going, is it going to shift? So what we need to do is we need to write the Q expression. So we're going to figure out what Q is and we're going to compare it to K. So that's how you would do this. If you are looking to see what re, uh, reaction is going to happen, so is it the forward reaction to make more products or is it the reverse reaction to make more reactants, you have to compare Q and K. So we know what K is, we need to know what Q is, and I have the pr partial pressures of each of my reactants and products. So let's write the Q expression first. So Q is equal to the products divided by the reactants. So in this case, we're looking at partial pressures. So we're going to look at the product. So the pressure of HOCl, and that's going to be to the second power, divided by my reactants. The partial pressure of H2O to the first power, there's no coefficient, multiplied by the partial pressure of Cl2O to the first because there's no coefficient. So now I can just plug my partial pressures in there. Okay, so my pressure of HOCl is 21 to the second power. I'm going to divide that by the partial pressure of water, which is 200 and multiply that by 49.8. All right, so 21 to the second power would be 441. 200 times 49.8, 9960. So divide them and I get 0 0.044. All right, so now when I look at this, I'm comparing Q to K. So if, if I'm looking at this right here, Q is less than K. So Q is less than K here. That means 
that the number on the bottom is too high. So remember, the number on the bottom should be your reactance. So since the reactance is too high, the partial pressure of the reactance would be too high here, that means that the reaction is going to proceed and make more products. So it's going to shift or keep going to make more products here. So the reaction, the forward reaction is going to be favored here. All right, so Kp and Kc are related with this equation. So Kp is equal to Kc multiplied by the universal gas constant times temperature, which is absolute, which means it should be in Kelvin. to the delta N, which is the change in moles. So what you do to get delta N is you just take the total number of moles of the products and you subtract the total number of moles of reactants. All right, so let's look at an example of this. All right, so I have this equation right here. It says write the Kc and the Kp expressions. Find Kp at 750 degrees Celsius if Kc is equal to this. All right, so. Um, First of all, I know that Kp is equal to this. That's the equation. So let's do the first part, though. It says write the Kc and the Kp expressions. All right, so Kc um, is equal to products. So they're all gases, so I'm going to include them concentration to the second power because that's my coefficient divided by my reactants to the second power here because that's my coefficient to the first power all right so now let's do kp all right so the partial pressure of my react or my product here is no2 to the second power divided by the partial pressure of NO to the second power times the partial pressure of O2 to the first. All right, so it says find Kp. Well, I can't find Kp unless I have partial pressures at equilibrium here using this. So I'm going to use this equation because I know what Kc is. I have 2.19 times 10 to the set, negative third. I also know what R is. R is the universal gas constant. It's always this number. And I know what temperature is. It's 750 degrees Celsius. And I can also figure out the change in moles. So let's do that. So if I look at the products, I have two moles for the products, and I'm going to subtract the total number of moles for my reactants. I have two here plus one here, so it's two minus three or negative one. So I can have a negative number for this. All right, so I have delta N, I have T, I have R, and I have KC. I have everything I need to solve for KP. Uh, the only thing is this has to be in Kelvin. So it's, I'm going to add 273 to that to get 1023. All right, so now I'm going to plug everything in my equation. So Kp is equal to Kc. Multiplied by R and T. And then I take that to the negative first power. All right, so if I multiply this out, I'm going to get um, 83.98. And that's to the negative first power. Really, this is saying that it's 1 divided by 83.98. Okay, so then after this, I am just going to multiply it out. And I should get 2.61 times 10 to the negative fifth. And that's my Kp value. 
And eventually we will be using this to solve for Kp or solving for partial pressures. All right, and I think that's it for this video. Yes, it is.